talking about sociology on the screen, specifically about how to use film to analyze and discuss sociological concepts. So today, hopefully, um, what I want you to take away from this is why film or media, how to approach those really controversial films that sometimes we, we would like to avoid, um, where to find resources, and how to connect the films or the media that you use in class to the course topics. So I personally love using films in class or videos because I love, I believe in the power of storytelling. I think stories, images, are really, really interesting and powerful. And I think the students love it. They feel that it's kind of a break for them, that they're not being lectured to. And just as it's a break for them, sometimes it can be a break for us too as instructors. But don't, don't tell my students I said that. Um, I love that it also changes up the routine in class. Um, usually, sometimes we get stuck in a rut, like lecture, or some group activity. Um, so using film or media, it's, it's one of those things that you could add to your bag of tricks as an instructor. Um, sometimes, I mean, there are some films or videos that are a little sad or depressing because of the nature of our um, you know, discipline, sociology. But sometimes they're really fun and interesting, and students really like it. And especially if I'm showing a film that's highly entertaining or funny, I like to go all out. And sometimes I'll even bring popcorn to the students, <laughs> and they see it as an event. Um, so it can be really fun and interesting. Um, and some films can actually address those sensitive or controversial issues in a very creative and lighthearted manner. So that's, that's always a plus. And of course they're accessible. This, this is especially useful if you have intro students um, or students who are not yet at an advanced level, it can be a gateway for complex ideas. Um, you could teach them different concepts like performance or impression management, but um, they don't have to read Goffman, whose read it, whose uh, works are not that accessible, at least for an intro student. And most of all, I think images usually have a really powerful impact. Sometimes it's one thing reading about an experiment or an issue versus actually seeing it. For example, the first time I, I saw footage of the Stanford Prison Experiment, um, I had learned about it multiple times before, but seeing it was a completely different experience. I was, luckily I saw it at home, and I was sobbing, I was, I was thinking how cruel people can be. Um, so it definitely drove um, that message that Zimbardo is trying to make about the pathology of imprisonment. So I want to show you here an example of a film, a short video actually, that despite being really short, really has a powerful message, particularly about how for a lot of women in society there are these unrealistic expectations, and usually they're unrealistic because they're kind of polar opposites of one another. Nowadays, for example, we expect women to look beautiful and flawless but at the same time, natural. Think of the hashtag, I woke up like this. Well, do we really accept women <laughs> when we see them without makeup on or, or when they wake up like this? Um, but, but why should I tell you that if a video can actually show it to you in a much more powerful way?
how a short video can be so powerful. I mean, it seems like it's, it's kind of a, a recipe for low self-esteem. A woman who is neither accepted naturally, as we think, you know, or society claims nowadays that we like natural women, but also not accepted with makeup on. Now, of course, there are some disadvantages to using media. Sometimes there aren't enough films on the topic that we are discussing, or sometimes there are too many and you can't decide which one to show. Sometimes they're time consuming, especially if we're talking about a documentary or a film that's an hour or two hours long. You might not want to devote that much time to it. And sometimes they can be also quite uncomfortable to watch. Um, but I say not, not to worry. I think there are ways that we can address these disadvantages, not with a mask and sword. <laughs> that, <laughs> that would freak out the students. But there are some strategies you can use. Um, in terms of time consuming, if time is an issue, I recommend showing clips or segments from a, a longer film. So, for example, when I talk about class, there's a film I like to show called People Like Us. And it's a really good film, but it's over two hours long. So sometimes I'll pick some segments from the film. For example, there's a really great segment in there about how race intersects with class. It's called Bourgeoisie Blues, about how in a society that usually equates being black with being poor, um, things can be quite challenging for middle-class African-Americans because usually they're seen as inauthentic, not really black. Either they're seen as exceptional, like, oh my God, you can write, or <laughs> you are articulate, as if being black means you cannot write or not being articulate. Or sometimes they're seen by lower-income African-Americans as inauthentic, is somehow whitewashed, or they lost their roots. So you can show a clip, or a couple of clips, or maybe you can focus on just showing one or two long films per semester. And remember that, of course, not all videos are long. You can use a short video that has a powerful message. Um, if there are too many films or videos on a topic, again, you can show clips from different films. So when I talk about class, especially class and food, I like to show a segment from people like us about how our food preferences reveal our social position. And I pair that with a clip from the documentary Food Inc. That's about how eating healthy is usually not really an option for low-income families. Or you could choose a pretty general film that touches on different aspects of one broad topic, like social class or gender. This is a, um, a segment from a film called Smoke Signals. It's a Native American film, actually. And I like it for, I, I love the content, but it's also great because you're exposing the students to diverse perspectives, and that's something we need to make sure we do in class. And I like to show this clip because it really captures the idea of gender being a performance. So if I can't, for example, show the film Tough Guys, which is a great film, but again, it's long, uh, I like to show this, this scene. And this scene actually is also shown in the film Tough Guys. Mm -hmm. Yes.
don't you have a normal conversation? You're always trying to sound like some damn medicine man or something. I mean, how many times have you seen dances before? A hundred, two hundred? Oh, jeez. You have seen it that many times, haven't you? Don't you even know how to be a real Indian? I guess not. Oh, shit, no wonder. Jeez. I guess I'll have to teach you then, ain't it? First of all, quit being like an idiot. Indians ain't supposed to smile like that. Get stoic. No. Like this. short scene, but it really demonstrates the, um, ooh, it's playing by itself, um, it really demonstrates or captures this idea that gender really comes down to a performance, and that's the case whether you're African American or white, or in this case Native American. smoke signals. Yes, actually at the end um, I'll be passing around a handout with some of these um, resources. Hmm, this thing has a mind of its own here. Mm -hmm. um, Is it perfect example of teaching with technology? Oh. <laughs> work 
pretty well as well. Now some of the really um, serious drawbacks of using films is that they can be quite controversial and that might deter many of us to show films in class. We want to avoid those kinds of controversies. So what do we do? I usually think it's best to give students a heads up. Tell them that, hey, this is a film that some people consider offensive. For example, sometimes I show the film um, Good Hair by Chris Rock, and there are some students who think it's offensive. And of course, that's difficult to approach that, but how do you deal with that? Before I show the film, I tell them that. I tell them, here are the critiques of this film. Some people feel that it makes fun of black women, and some people feel that it's trivial, that black women have other issues that need to be addressed rather than just their hair. So I tell them, keep these critiques in mind and see what you think about that as you're watching the film. Sometimes I'll even share my own critiques of the film. So that way they know that I'm not accepting the film fully or rejecting it fully. That you can accept things and reject things. And um, I also make sure I give them an outlet. Um, I make sure I give them an opportunity to voice their concerns about the film so that they know I'm not just showing them a film and saying, here it is, here's what's going on. Instead, I'm kind of exposing them to a different view and letting them make up their own opinion on the film. I also tell them that we, I'm usually really straightforward with my students. I tell them, you know, I could not show this film to avoid this really controversial issue, but that's not going to make it go away. People are still going to think that African American women's hair is not good hair. So um, we can ignore it, or we can actually have a discussion about it and share our opinions so that all of us can see where we're coming from, why we have the opinions that we have. So I pose it to them as a learning opportunity. Sometimes films can be uncomfortable to watch if there's a scene, for example, that's gory, that has a lot of blood, fast forward is a great tool. Um, or if it's a film that's kind of sensitive, again, footage of the Stanford prison experiment, um, it can be uncomfortable to watch if you're sensitive. So I tell students, I give them a heads up before the film and tell them that they don't have to look up at the screen or they could actually leave if it becomes too uncomfortable. Some of the resources that you can use uh, include news clips. Sometimes the New York Times has uh, videos or think of National Geographic. If you have access to Netflix or Hulu or HBO, that's great. They have documentaries as well as regular films. Um, sociological cinema, um, of course, check your campus library, but again, look beyond that. Look at comedy, John Stewart, Amy Schumer. Usually they um, cover really controversial issues, but in a funny, creative manner. Um, social media, Upworthy or Facebook. And even TV ads like the Duff campaign. But of course we have to be careful with those because they are trying to sell us a product. Now how do you then apply the films or videos you show in class to the topics you're talking about or you're covering in class? There are several ways you can do this. Sometimes I like to use a film as an introduction to a topic. So when I talk about gender and work, of course I like to talk about housework as well because it's a woman's second shift. But most students, most people, don't really think of it as work. Um, so how do I get that point across to them? Well, I show them this short video here, and I'll be coming back to this, but I show them this um, video. It was, I believe it first was on Upworthy, and it's called 
the world's toughest job interview. <laughs> Let me show it to you. I think it, it really addresses this issue in a very creative and funny way. Second, sure. Thank you, sorry. Uh huh. Two minutes. Thank you. Hi. Good afternoon. Sorry about hey, that. Um, and I tell them, yeah, it's actually all of that. 
all those are all the different ways that class affects our everyday life, and then I show them the film. Or you can, and this is good for longer films that are one or two hours long, you can actually pause for a discussion during the program, get their feedback about a different about different segments. So there's a segment in People Like Us where a woman tries to change her social class. So I pause after that after that and I tell them, well, do you think she can actually pull that off? Can she actually change her social class? And that way also it prevents students from kind of zoning out mm -hmm. as they're watching a really long film. In terms of post-viewing activities, you can also have them um, do a class discussion or group discussion or homework assignment. I like to think, what do I want students to take away from this film? For example, when I showed a film, The Deadly Deception, on a syphilis, on a Tuskegee syphilis study, I want the students to be able to tell me why it's unethical and why it's racist. And I formulate questions based on that. Um, you can have them apply the film they saw to a theory discussed in class, or you can have them do a film critique. This is especially useful for, um, for controversial films. It allows them to give their opinion, or even an in-class reflection. Here I've listed some films that you can connect to sociological topics. Um, the Deadly Deception, People Like Us is one of my favorites. Roger and Me, sometimes I like to pair that with a reading called Job on the Line. Um, because Roger and Me explores what happens to a community when manufacturing jobs um, disappear. But then Job on the Line looks at the other side what happens to people who take on those jobs overseas or across the border. Um, for gender, there are a lot. Again, make sure to give a heads up. If you're showing a film like this one, The Greatest Silence, which is about war and rape. Um, Deviance. I haven't seen this film, The Experiment, but I believe it's in theaters now, and it's about the Milgram study on obedience and socialization. So hopefully with all of this, all of these different strategies, you'll be able to have your students apply their sociological lens to their everyday life, um, maybe even when they're sleeping. So <laughs> thank you for your time, and I, I hope this was um, helpful to you.